What's up everybody, Crypto Noah back with another video. In this video, we're gonna be talking about if you should claim your rewards from your yield farm and liquidity pools, or if you should compound them back into the pool to increase your APR. So before we get into it, I do have to say this video should not be taken as financial advice. These are just my opinions and this is what I do with my strategy. Do your own research, but use this channel as a starting point. So in this video, we're gonna cover what yield farming is. For those of you who don't know, we're gonna talk about how you're paid and if you should claim your rewards or compound them back in. Let's get into it. So what is yield farming? There's multiple ways to yield farm. You can use your funds to facilitate borrowing and lending. You can stake to you know, secure a blockchain network, whether that's ETH or Solana or whatever you know that main token is for that blockchain. You can stake your tokens on Nexus Mutual to facilitate insurance premiums. But the way we're talking about is through providing liquidity on decentralized exchanges in the form of pairs so that whatever pool you provide liquidity in, you make passive income anytime there's a swap that happens in that pool. For example, I can go on Uniswap and trade my USDC for ETH or trade my ETH for USDC. Now, it is everyday people like you and I, which means you could go on that pool and you can deposit your ETH and your USDC within that pool. And you make passive income anytime people trade from ETH to USDC or USDC to ETH. And the amount that you're paid depends on what percentage your liquidity makes up in the pool. For example, for easy math's sake, if there's $100,000 in the pool and you deposit 5K in ETH, 5K in USDC, well, your liquidity makes up 10% of that pool, which means you get 10% of all the trading fees that happens within that pool as long as your liquidity is still deposited. Going a step further, Uniswap launched concentrated liquidity back in 2022, I believe, which allows you to pick the price range you want your liquidity to be used for, which makes your capital more efficient. So for example, if you think the price of ETH is gonna trade between $2,000 to $3,000, you can say, hey, I only use my liquidity for when the price is in between $2,000 or $3,000. The wider you go, the lower your risk, but also the lower your passive income or APY. The tighter your risk, the higher your passive income, but the higher your risk. And your risk is something called impermanent loss. Basically, impermanent loss is like a limit order for the losing asset. So if you're in ETH USDC, and your range is two to 3,000, and price goes above $3,000, well now, all the liquidity you had in that pool, your ETH and USDC is gonna be 100% USDC, not including your fees. And if you go out of range to the downside, you're gonna be in 100% ETH, since ETH was the one that dropped and underperformed against USDC. And if it wasn't obvious already, you get paid in whatever liquidity you provide. So in ETH USDC, you're getting paid in ETH and you're getting paid in USDC. So now the question is, should I take my ETH and my USDC and compound it back in to increase my APY or APR? Or should I take my rewards, turn them into cash, buy another altcoin, or just leave it there? Like, what should you do with it? Let's get into that right now. So first, let's talk about when you would compound. I've never compounded my rewards directly but instead I like to rebalance my portfolio every month and I like to have 20 to 25% of my portfolio allocated to just yield farming. And I made a video on how the concept of yield farming has biblical significance. You need cash flow, you need cash, and you need assets. Stable coins is cash, your altcoins and your Bitcoin and your ETH are assets, and yield farming is your cash flow. Abraham was the first person in the Bible that God said was very rich, and he was rich in silver, gold, and livestock. The silver is the cash por portion. It was used for small transactions back then. The gold is the asset. It was used for bigger purchases and to speculate on. And the livestock is the cash flow. Meaning you can take your sheep and sell wool. You can take your goat and sell the milk to accumulate more silver and gold. So I look at my portion of my yield farmer portfolio for me to accumulate more assets so I can add to my cash and altcoin position. But there are multiple strategies. So let's talk about when I would compound. If I were to compound, it would be if I was focused on generating more reward fees, right? It can reduce your impermanent loss because the more rewards you have, the more it offsets your impermanent loss. But my main strategy is I want as much impermanent loss as possible because that's how I have my strategy set up. The, mo the more and permanent loss that I'm able to accumulate, the better I'll do. And that's been working pretty well for me. I, I find it harder to win uh, through compounding because like I said, I think yield farming is most successful when it's combined uh, with trading. Like, yeah, you can adjust the range and everything like that if it goes up and get in and out. But like, 
For example, let's say I'm in a pool and I'm getting 100% APR and I'm constantly compounding my rewards in there. I'm not ever able to benefit off of any price appreciation, right? Even if I'm getting a thousand percent APR, if it goes out of range, eventually I'm going to be capped, right? So if your goal is to just get the highest APY that you can get and just constantly like grow your yield farming position, which I wouldn't advise, that's when I would compound, right? Let's talk about why I don't compound. I like to take my rewards and use it to buy altcoins that I'm bullish on or use it to sell my rewards for cash so I can wait for a buy the dip opportunity so I can take profits, right? I made a video on how I plan on turning $15,000 into $1 million investing into Maple Finance. And in that video, I showed that I was getting over 100% APR. And I gave an example. Let's say I'm getting 100% APR for six months, which means I accumulated 50% more maple. And let's say I had 12K in the position. That means I accumulated $6,000 in maple for free. So if I align that with my take profit strategy, I can turn that 6K into three, four, maybe 500K, depending on how aggressive I want to get it. But if I just keep compounding my rewards, when maple does pump and it eventually outperforms ETH, well, then I'm just going to be in all ETH and I don't have anything to show for my rewards. Or if I take my rewards and I'm claiming them and I'm paying my bills with them or anything like that or something like that, I don't have anything to show for them. And now once I turn that 6K into 300K, when I go to rebalance my portfolio again, the 20% of my yield farming portfolio, the principal will be greater and I can literally just rinse and repeat. And if you look at the portfolios of market makers like Citadel, they don't market make with all of their capital. They have a portion for market making and then they have cash and assets on their balance sheet. And I don't know their strategies in and out because it's mostly private, but I'm pretty sure that they rebalance their portfolio on a certain basis as well. And I'm pretty sure that they will want a certain portion of their portfolio for cash assets and yield farming as well. Like that's the only way you can win. And that's what the math says. And guys, just to come back in and check in on that pool right now, I'm getting 138% APR. Last time it was around hundred. I've made $797 so far from doing absolutely nothing. I've only been in it for 19 days. So eventually you'll get to the point where you're playing with house money. You just keep taking rewards. I use my ETH to buy more maple when it dips. Right now, if we look at my maple at the ETH chart, this is the range from here to here. I got in at around here. So if it hits this line, I'm getting out of position. I'm gonna take some of the maple and sit on it, right? But I'm gonna use some to enter into another range. What that range is gonna be, it depends on how low it goes and everything like that. But when, it make, when Maple does inevitably go back up, I'll take some profits, enter into another pool, and just keep rinsing and repeating. You can't lose that way. Just as long as you provide liquidity for, for two assets you don't mind holding on their own, aka don't provide liquidity for shit coins because you will regret it. So guys, with that, I'd like to conclude this video. If you want to learn how to provide liquidity like a professional market maker, we have our Know It All Academy that teaches you everything you need to know. We have professional coaches that do this for a living. You have you get access to them, including myself. We give you our strategies. We give you our buy calls. We'll review your current situation and try to help you come up with your own strategy. So if that sounds interesting to you and you want to be a part of a group of like-minded people who are hungry for knowledge and always trying to make each other better, click the link in the description or visit knowitalls.xyz. Book a free strategy session. We'll hop on, see if our program's a good fit for you as we only let a certain amount and certain type of person in. And if you're not, we'll still try to help you and answer any questions that you may have. So with that, if you got value, I ask that you consider subscribing, drop a like, drop a comment. Let me know what topic you want me to cover next. But until then, I thank you so much for watching. I love every single one of you and I'll see you in the next video. Take care and trade safe.